Okay, then, in today's video, I'm gonna go over the easiest way that you can beat the Nightmare Dragodyne raid. So, with that being said, let's get into it. First things first, we gotta go over the Lumians that you'll need on your teams. Player 1's first Lumian will want to be a Luxor. You want it to have a very smart personnel to with 200 range attack TPs to hit as hard as possible, while the 200 range defense TPs and 100 health TPs maximizes our bulk for range attacks. For the moves, we're going to want to run Luminous Raw, Scapegoat, Disperse, and Peace of Mind. The ability doesn't matter, but for the held item, we're going to want to run a Health Amulet to keep Luxor as healthy as possible. Player 2's first Lumion will want to be a Falker. You want it to have a very smart personality with 200 range attack TPs to hit as hard as possible, with the 40 speed TPs giving us just enough speed to outspeed the level 55 Nightmare Dragodyne. And then the 200 range defense TPs and 60 health TPs maximizes our bulk for range attacks. For the moves, we'll just need Radiant Forecast, Nova Blast, and Magnify. The ability we'll want is Awakening. And then for the held item, we're going to want a Light Essence to increase our damage outputs. Now, last year, both Player 1 and Player 2's team ran a Gas Stroke with Return to Sender and a Clutch Plusher to wipe out an entire segment of Dragodyne's health. You can still use this strategy this year. However, because Dragodyne had its anomaly ability switch for staunch as a way to nerf it in PvP, I increased the Nightmare's health multiplier from a 2.25 times multiplier to a 2.5 times multiplier as an attempt to not make it too easy. And because of this health increase, Gastro will only do about 90% to a segment instead of the full 100%. So you can still use the strategy, but it's just not as reliable. So instead, I think Player 1 and Player 2 should double up on Luxor and Valkyrie. So Player 1 will have a Luxor and a Valkyrie, and Player 2 will have a Valkyrie and a Luxor. This will give you a second chance if anything goes wrong, like a potential daze, flinch, or even just missing your Luminous Roar. And I guess this will make it a little bit easier to look for teammates, since if you only had a Luxor, you need to find someone with a Valkyrie. Whereas if you have both, you can fill both of the roles. And then the last Lumion on both Player 1 and Player 2's team should be a hard hitter. I think the best Lumion you can bring to fill this role is a Soul Burst Erupted on. This is because of the Soul Move Hellstorm, which not only does a huge amounts of damage thanks to its Pyro Pro ability and its huge range attack stat, but on top of the initial huge damage output, with the secondary effect, you can also wipe out an extra half a health bar over the next three turns, just for using it. Although, you can also just use any other Lumion that you have, like last year's Infernix or Barbadger if you have them, or even better, if you have any other recommendations, make sure to leave a comment so people can go through them and see if they actually have any of those Lumions already. Okay, and now really fast, let's go over a brief summary on what each Lumion's role is and what they're meant to do. Luxor is naturally faster than the Dragodyne and hits pretty hard too, but the most important thing it has in its kit is Luminous Roar, which can block the Dragodyne from using its most powerful move, Egg Storm, for three turns. Disperse isn't super important, but after using it once, we won't have to worry about Luminous Roar missing anymore. And to prevent the Luxor from fainting, we have Scapegoat, Peace of Mind, Health Amulet, and its range defense investment to keep it around. So yeah, the general idea is to cycle between Luminous Raw, Scapegoat, and Peace of Mind. Valkyrie is naturally tanky, and thanks to its typing, it resists every move that Dragodyne has, other than the Egg Storm. We need a little bit of speed to outspeed the Dragodyne, but other than that, we're going to want to use Magnify to increase our range attack stat, and output huge damage with Radiant Forecast and Nova Blast. So yeah, the typing-wise is... A very clear winner for Falker. And then for Eruptodon or whatever your hard hitter is, we'll want to go for setup, in my case Magnify if it's safe to do so, and then we can fire off as many strong moves as possible before we faint. Also, I would definitely recommend to make your hard hitter outspeed the Nightmare Dragodyne, which the Nightmare Dragodyne is level 55, which means its speed stat is 104, and actually Soul Burst Eruptodon's speed stat without any speed investment, just 40 speed UPs, is 105, so we just, just barely outspeed it. And I guess really fast I should go over Gastro just in case you want to use it as well. But the idea is we want to maximize our health stat as much as possible while decreasing our range defense stat as much as possible. Also, it sounds a bit counterintuitive, but with the Clutch Plushie, we will always love a hit no matter what, even if it takes us down to one health, which is actually what we're intending it to do. And we only want to use this Gastro when the Dragodyne is on either its last health segment or its second to last health segment. We don't want to use it before then because it's a complete waste. Basically, we want the Dragodyne to one-shot our Gastroke, taking us down to one health because of our Clutch Plushie, and then we can return to Sender, which will basically just do double damage back to the Dragodyne. 
Th that's the entire idea. It is a very, like, sacrificial lamb type of thing. For turn one, Luxor will want to use Luminous Roar to prevent the Dregdine from using Eggstorm, while the Valkyrie sets up a Radiant Forecast. For turn two, Luxor will want to set up a Scapegoat to prevent it from taking too much damage if the Dregdine targets us, while the Valkyrie then goes for a Magnify. Then for turn three, Luxor will want to go for another Scapegoat if our first one was broken. If not, we can wait to recover some energy back while the Valkyrie sets up another Magnify. And at the end of this turn, Radiant Forecast will strike, taking care of Dragodine's first health bar segment, which will trigger it to remove our stat increases that we got from Magnify, and then also Luminous Raw's effect will also end. For turn 4, Luxor will want to use Luminous Raw again to prevent Eggstorm from being used while the Falkyrie sets up another Radiant Forecast. On turn 5, Luxor will want to use Scapegoat if we don't have one set up, although if we already do have one set up still, we can go for Disperse instead, which will increase our range attack stat by one stage so we can deal more damage, but more importantly, it will increase our accuracy by one stage so Luminous Raw will no longer miss for the rest of the battle and Valkyrie will want to use Magnify. On turn 6, Luxor will want to go for Scapegoat if we don't have one set up already, otherwise we can start going for Peace of Mind to increase our range attack stat by one stage and our range defense stat by one stage, so we can deal more damage and we can take less damage. While the Valkyrie also goes for a Nuller Magnify. And then at the end of this turn, Radiant Forecast will land to deal damage and also Luminous Roll's effect will also end. On turn 7, Luxor will want to go for Luminous Roll to prevent Eggstorm from being used again, while Valkyrie goes for a Nuller Radiant Forecast. On turn 8, Luxor will want to go for Scapegoat if we don't have one set up already, otherwise we can go for Peace of Mind, while the Valkyrie goes for a Rest to get all of its energy back. On turn 9, Luxor will want to go for Scapegoat if we don't have one set up, otherwise we can go for Peace of Mind again, while the Valkyrie starts going for some Nova Blasts. And at the end of this turn, Radiant Forecast will strike to deal damage, and also Luminous Roll's effect will also end. On turn 10, Luxor will want to go for Luminous Roll again to prevent Eggstorm from being used, while the Valkyrie goes for another Radiant Forecast. On turn 11, Luxor will want to go for a Wait or a Rest, depending if we have a Scapegoat up, and depending on how much health we have, while the Valkyrie goes for another Nova Blast. On turn 12, Luxor will want to go for Scapegoat if there isn't one set up currently, otherwise it can start to finally deal some damage with Luminous Raw, while the Falkyrie goes for a Wait or Rest, again depending on how much health we currently have. And at the end of this turn, Radiant Forecast will strike to deal damage to Dragodine, and that's actually where my battle ended. Although I should make it very clear that this strategy isn't guaranteed to win 100% of the time, it will win you a lot of times if you know what you're doing, but there also is just some things out of your control that may happen. Like your Luminous Roll just missing for the first couple of times before you use Disperse. You can also get Daze and hit yourself. You can just get Critical Hitted. And Jetstream can lower your speed, which might make it a little bit more difficult in the long run. Although, with that being said, I think this is the easiest Lumias that you can get your hands on in terms of free-to-play. Of course, though, there are better Lumias that can add onto your team, such as Wabblisk, which is single-handedly the best Lumia to use against the Dragodine raid, which I'll do a separate video on, which will just be, like, the best way to beat the Dragodine. Whereas this is the easiest one, mostly intended for free-to-play players. 